Mercedes had a torrid weekend in Brazil last week, as Lewis Hamilton and George Russell struggles with tyre degradation and pace cost them positions in the sprint and the Grand Prix. Team boss Toto Wolff was furious with his team after the race, and made his feelings known to the press. It's been another tough season for the once dominant team, with Ferrari just 20 points behind Mercedes in second in the Constructors' Championship. While Russell retired with cooling issues, Hamilton, who had been running as high as third on Sunday, brought his W14 across the line in eighth place and stated he thought the floor wasn't working. Given that was Mercedes' latest upgrade and had led to back-to-back -back podium finishing performances in Austin and Mexico, Wolf admitted they were at a loss as to what went wrong in Brazil. The saga of Mercedes' turbulence started in 2022. After dominating the turbo hybrid era for seven years, Mercedes handed over the reins to Red Bull. With the new ground effect regulations in play, Red Bull hit the mark, and Mercedes couldn't have fallen short by a larger margin. After struggling through 2022, the Brackley squad could have had a better 2023. How? By listening to Hamilton. Instead, Toto Wolff ignored him, and now, the full storm it achieved a year ago at the Brazilian GP was precisely why Mercedes had a terrible outing in Interlagos last weekend. Mercedes couldn't have started 2023 on a worse note. The W14 was a bad car. That was the bottom line. After introducing a B spec, the team has somehow managed to stay second in the Constructors' Championship. But by no means is it the second best car on the grid. Having watched on as his cars failed to make any impression in Brazil, Wolf couldn't disguise his disappointment as he spoke to Sky F1 following the race. Inexcusable performance. There's even no words for that. That car finished second last week and the week before and, whatever we did to it, was horrible. Lewis survived out there but George. I can only feel for the two drivers with such a miserable thing. So it shows how difficult the car is, it's on a knife's edge. We've got to develop that better for next year because it can't be that, within seven days, you're finishing on the podium as one of the two quickest cars and then you're nowhere. Asked whether the impact of the sprint format, with a lack of practice time before the implementation of park firm conditions after FP1, had had any bearing on Mercedes not nailing their setup, Wolf said he doesn't think it's the full story. We're clearly not world champions on sprint race weekends. But it still doesn't explain what went wrong. I mean, the car almost drove like it was three wheels and not on four. With the W14 looking as though it will be Mercedes' first winless car since the W02 from 2011, Wolf said the car's performance doesn't merit a victory at this point. This car doesn't deserve a win. I think we need to push for the last two races and recover. That's the most important thing, and see what we can do in Las Vegas with a totally different track, an Abu Dhabi, but the performance today was. I'm just lacking words. I think straight line speed was one issue. That was probably not the main factor. The main factor was that we couldn't go around the corners with the bigger wing with the pace we needed and we were killing the tires just eating them up within a few laps. Mercedes said there was no simple answer for why it so was badly off the pace in Brazil. But Wolf did admit that it had been far too conservative with its ride height, which could have played a factor. In the wake of Hamilton's disqualification from second place in Austin for excessive plank wear, the team appears to have sacrificed more than it needed to in Brazil to ensure there were no legality issues this time around. We ran the car way too high, but that wasn't the main reason for an absolute off weekend in terms of performance. There's something fundamentally wrong mechanically rather. It's not a rear wing and it's not the car being slightly too high, because we're talking a millimeter or two. That is performance, but that isn't the explanation for a total off. The pain of the Brazilian Grand Prix is especially confusing for Mercedes, because it comes just one year after the team delivered the perfect car and set up to allow Russell to win. Asked if this outing meant the team had ultimately learned nothing about its car in 12 months, Wolf said. It is baffling. From a really quick car, the best balanced and drivers happy, to a nightmare. How's that even possible? What is it? What is it that's not right? I wouldn't be surprised that we analyze the cars in the next few days and we find out that there was a mechanical issue in the way we set him up or something. But I don't know what it will be. With the car so fundamentally poor last weekend, Mercedes must consider whether there are still gaps in their understanding and interpretation of the current aerodynamic regulations such that they are still wildly varying from track to track. This does not for a winning car make. Red Bull, whose aero package is superlative, are strong in almost all conditions and at every circuit. 
there was no expectation that the upgrades would turn the W14, from what Wolf described earlier in the season as a nasty piece of work into a race winner, but there was hope that it would at least provide a solid baseline from which to build. That baseline, it seems, is veering wildly and unhelpfully. For the team that won eight Constructors' Championships between 2014 and 2021, this is clearly inexplicable, but it has not come out of the blue. The car concept they brought to the grid in 2022 proved to be flawed. However, improvements to it during the season convinced those at the top of Mercedes that they were on the right track, such that they continued with it for this season. By the end of the first race Wolf acknowledged that was a mistake. But it was too late, they were committed. This is perhaps the toughest test Mercedes have faced since returning to the sport, but there may be reason for hope. The current car is flawed and so an imperfect testbed. Its performance is influenced by those limitations and, as Wolf noted, it was not a matter of ride height or wing settings that cost them in Brazil but basic mechanics. Whether the team have a handle on that for next year will decide their fate. For Hamilton it was, he noted pointedly, a weekend to forget in a car he cannot wait to see the back of. Hamilton has a contract for two more years with Mercedes, but cautioned that he believes Red Bull might be not be caught. He does not feel anyone will be able to step up and challenge Verstappen or Red Bull until the 2026 rule reset. The Red Bull is so far away that they are probably going to be very clear for the next couple of years. Hamilton has never lacked motivation, and there is no indication that he is any less committed to Mercedes. But he, too, expects more next year. His patience has been severely tested over the past two years. A repeat of Brazil in 2024 might stretch it to breaking point. Reflecting on his race, Hamilton explained how he knew Mercedes would be in for a tough day, and pointed towards the floor as a possible cause of the problems. I knew that it would be a difficult day, nothing changed on the car from the sprint and in it, I ate through the tires. My guess is that the floor was not working, it is something we rely on and so that pushed us to go to a higher rear wing, which is massively draggy on the straights. We were losing too much time on the straights and there was nothing I could do about it and then we were sliding into the corners so we will have to look into why that was the case. Ultimately, it is a setback, but as a team, we'll just come together and try to push forwards. There will be a lot of analysis this week and I'm sure there will be things where we're like, we should have maybe done this, it would have been a little better, but ultimately, the car didn't work for some reason, and that is the way it is. So, what are your thoughts? Do you agree with Lewis Hamilton? Will Red Bull be uncatchable in both 2024 and 2025? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video please consider liking and subscribing to the channel and don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos.